With all that in mind, our portion of Scripture. Verses 1 through 8 this morning tell us in James, as he wrote the opening chapter of God's new covenant people's testament, the covenant of faith, what did he say? Simply this, that a maturing walk of faith will endure painful troubles. That's a sign that you're a genuine Christian. Not that you will avoid them, and not that you'll take a nuproxen or an ibuprofen or a Motrin or whatever to make it go away, but that you'll go through it by the grace of God and through his help. This morning, just briefly, I want to share with you the truth about your pain, about your problems, about your trials. They're mine, too. We share the same. And this morning, it's time to remind ourselves about the truth that God has given us about those painful problems and trials. We're under an avalanche of pain reliever commercials, of pain stopper living, of pain killer life. But the fact is that pain and problems are a part of life. And if you never have any pain in your life, you're probably inhuman. You might as well be Data on Star Trek. He never cries. But if you're a human being, you have physical pain. You have emotional pain. You have spiritual pain. I'd like to quote from not a Christian, but an eminent psychologist who wrote this. Fearing pain, almost all of us, and I think this guy hit the truth in his quote, or I wouldn't quote it. Fearing pain, almost all of us, to a greater or lesser degree, attempt to avoid problems. We procrastinate, hoping that they'll just go away. We ignore them and pretend they don't exist. We attempt to get out of them rather than suffer through them. I think he hit it. That's what we're like. Let me add this. This tendency to avoid problems and emotional pain is, and this is the conclusion of this fellow's article, the primary basis of human mental illness. Now, that's interesting. This psychologist believes that the primary reason humans have mental illness is because they're avoiding and denying problems. Now, not quoting him anymore, the desire and attempt to avoid pain and face our problems is probably the basis for a lot of human mental illness. Now, the fact is God God doesn't want us to ignore our pain. He wants us to discover why the pain is there so we can find real relief from Him. Because pain is a gift from God. And it's a wonderful gift. And God wants us to know something very clearly. He uses pain as a tool to develop His good plan in our lives. Here's a verse you might want to jot down somewhere. John 13, 7. Listen to what Jesus says. He's speaking to the disciples who were greatly pained. They were moved. They were grieved. They, they couldn't understand. They were just starting to get in a fog. And this is what he says in John 13, 7. You don't realize now what I'm doing, but later on you'll understand. That should be written over the medicine closet when you go for an aspirin. You don't understand what God's doing when you're going through the wilderness and desert and captivity times. But later on, you'll understand if you just get in line with what I'm doing. Pain is the ultimate test of that verse. If we can't see the purpose for our pain, we struggle with it. But when we see God's purposes, we grow or are nurtured. So this morning, I want you to look from the scriptures in James at five things that God says about pain. Five ways that God uses painful problems and trials for good in our lives. Now, I'm going to use a lot of different words, but five of them will be G's to aid you in your memory of this. Okay, number one, God uses painful problems and trials to goad or push me. That is a G, goad. Remember Paul said, uh, it's hard for you, or Lord said to Paul, it's hard for you to kick against the ox goad. A goad is something that pokes you and makes you go forward. And God uses painful problems and trials in our lives to goad us or to push us his way. That word goad or push means to motivate me. And goad or push means to spur me into action. And pain is an incredible motivator. Most people won't go to the dentist until it hurts so much they don't know where else to turn. Now, I'm not you know, saying anything about dentists, but it's human, just normal life that we don't like. It's like when you're little and you don't want to get a shot. And many people have said this, we don't change when we see the light, we, we change when we feel the heat, Right? You don't usually slow down until you think you saw a policeman, right? Or when someone else gets pulled over or whatever. Listen to what Proverbs 20, here's another important verse to write down. Proverbs 20 and verse 30 says this. 
Sometimes it takes painful experiences to make us change our ways. Wasn't Solomon wise? Isn't that how it is? Pain pushes us, pain prods us, pain forces us to do things that lead us to change, doesn't it? First time you have chest pains, you immediately start changing your diet and your activities and and everything else. But you wouldn't change them if you didn't feel that. It's so amazing. Usually when we hit bottom, then we're ready to change. Another great scriptural example is the prodigal son's example. Let me read to you Luke 15, 14 through 18. Listen to this. The prodigal son spent everything he had. He was hungry, and he came to his senses and said, I'll get up and go to my father. The hunger pains finally motivated him. Do you ever have hunger pains? Some of us have them all the time. But spiritually, God uses pain in our lives, and trials to motivate us, to goad us, to push us. And we would rarely change if we didn't have that pain in our life.